Hello and welcome to EucraMedia.com. My name is Sergey Proknevsky and today I want to show you how powerful essential graphics are in Premiere. Right now I'm working on a course on expressions called After Effects Expressions in Simple English. By the way, this course will be out this April 16th, so keep an eye out for that. But for this example, I'm using a small section from this course and I kind of want to scroll through it and show you how useful these essential graphics are. So if you go to the very beginning and if you hit play, you'll see this title and it kind of comes on and then it wipes out. So again, this title right here is fully customizable within Premiere. In other words, I can change the colors, the text, add another text in here, all that without ever going into After Effects. So I'll show you that here in a second. If you keep going, you'll see this highlighter coming on right here, this thing right here. Let me play that out. So if I hit play, you'll see it come on here. And what that thing does, it kind of highlights the area that I'm talking about. But that thing in itself is also fully customizable, which I'll show you that shortly as well. And you probably have seen my shortcuts right here. If you see this right here, it's a shortcut that I use in my tutorials. But that thing is also fully customizable in Premiere. If you keep going, Let's go to the very top. I end all of my videos with a quick wipe like this one right here. It is also fully customizable in Premiere. Now, let me show you what my setup looks like in Premiere. All right, so here we are in Premiere, and this is what Chapter 2 looks like. As you can see, we have a lot of clips in here, a lot of edits, but let's zoom in right into this section right here, this expression button section, and right away you see all these pink clips in here, and those are Mogart files. Basically, it's short for Motion Graphic Template. Now, let's zoom in right in the front here, and let's go over this first one. So we have this title Mogart, and if I scroll through here, you can see it animates in, and then it stays, and then it animates out. Now, if I click on it, and then go to this Essential Graphics panel, we have more options in here. By the way, if you're not seeing this essential graphics panel, go to window and then make sure this essential graphics is checked. Okay, so we do have options inside there. So let me click on it right here. We have all these options we can change, but we'll go over that here shortly. Now let's go to the second one. We have this highlighter right here. Here it is. And if I click on that, that thing has a lot of options as well. Let's keep going down the line here and let's go to the shortcut Mogart. So here it is right there. I'm going to click on it as well. Here it is in our window right in there. And if I preview this, you can see that it animates. But when you click on it and go to the essential graphics panel and you can see that we have have all kinds of options, which we'll go over that shortly as well. Now let's go to the very end right in here. We have this wipe right here. If you click on it, that thing has also all kinds of options. But let me take some time and go over all of them individually. The first one is title, and here it is in our timeline. As you can see, animates in and out, but let me show you how I bring it in. So I'm going to go to the Essential Graphics panel here and then click on Browse, and I already have my templates that I created in After Effects. So I'm going to select this title Mogart and just drag it into my timeline like this. It's that simple, and then I can just kind of scroll and see the animation you know, this is the default look right here. But if I click on it and go into the edit option right here and look at my options in here, I can control the length of my animation. I can control this gap one, which is between those two right here. I can adjust it. So maybe increase it some like that. As you can see, it increases it here. I can undo that. Then I can adjust the gap two, which is between those two. So maybe I can alter it some as well like that. Then I can turn off title one, this title right here. When I turn it off, notice that everything gets adjusted. In other words, everything is centered. I can turn it back on. I can adjust the text so I can say, Ukramedia com And when I let go, you can see it adjusts right here. I can adjust the color of it. So I can go over here and maybe take it to orange like that. Hit OK. Then I can go to Title 2. I can turn it off or turn it back on. Again, everything gets adjusted. I can adjust the text in here. So I can say Expressions and it gets adjusted in here. I can also go and change the color. I can go to Title 3, turn it off, turn it back on, change the text in here, and then I can adjust the color of it. I can also go to the background color. So if I go to the beginning of it, notice I have this color right here, this orange. I can change that to any color I want. So I can click here and then take it to blue here. So hit OK. And now it's going to change it to blue. I can preview it. And as you can see, it's working. Next, we have this logo, which is that right there. I can turn it off, turn it on, or I can adjust the size of it. I can increase it some. Let's take it up to maybe 20 25. As you can see, it got bigger here. We can also adjust the Y position of it by dragging on this value right here. We can push it down or push it up. I'm going to undo this. Essentially, that is it for the title Mogart, but you can definitely see how much time you can save with this. Next one is this highlighter right here, and I use it quite often in this course to highlight certain areas. So here it is in my timeline. If you click on it, you have all these options in here, but I'm going to bring in a new one into my sequence. So I'm going to click on Browse, and then let's click on this and drag right into our sequence. So here it is. As you can see, it's a circle right now, but we're going to click on it and go inside these settings. Right here, we can adjust the X and Y position so I can move it to the right sum or left, and let's take it down to maybe like right here. Let's focus on these buttons right there. So maybe I can adjust the width of it. Let's take it down to 200 and let's take the height down to 50. Okay, as you can see, it highlights our buttons right there. I can move it to the left a little bit like this and maybe down some like this. I can also increase my width, maybe take it to 300. So it highlights all of my buttons. I can adjust the roundness over here, maybe take it to 10. So it's slightly rounded. What else? We can also play around with the rotation. You can give it a slight tilt, maybe like 15 degrees like that. 
I'm going to undo it. And then we can adjust the stroke width. I can take it up to maybe 10. As you can see, it's a lot thicker. So I'm going to undo that control Z. You can also play with the stroke color and fill color. So in here I can change it to maybe let's do yellow. As you can see, it is yellow. And if I preview this, you can see the animation didn't change much at all. So I can go back over here. Notice this white area. That's my fill color. And I can adjust the color of it in here. So maybe let's take it to something bluish like that. Hit OK. So now I can preview this. And then let's go back here. Let's take the fill opacity to 100%. So now this blue is not transparent. Next, let's talk about this shortcuts mogurt. So here it is in our timeline. As you can see, it animates in and then it stays there and then it animates out. So if I click on it, we have all these options in here. We can adjust the text in here and everything else. But let's start fresh. I'm going to go to browse and then I'll click on it here and then drag into my sequence like this. And then I can preview it right here. As you can see, there it is. Let's click on it and then let's go into the edit options in here. So we can adjust the shortcut one text so I can change it to let's do control plus Z. So if I let go, you can see things are adjusted. I can do the same thing for Mac command plus Z. And then if I let go, things get adjusted. The width of it is adjusted as well. You can see how easily I can add shortcuts in my tutorial. So I can keep going. I can change the title over here. I can also change the title for my PC and Mac right there. And I can also move it on X and Y. So I can move it left or right. I can also move it up or down. In fact, I'm going to move it up some. Something like that would work. And then I can adjust the roundness right here. So I can maybe take it up more, maybe like 50. As you can see, the roundness of my corners has changed. Or I can make my corners completely flat. So I can go over here and change it to zero. Then we can adjust all these colors for everything you see in here. Let's keep going. We can adjust the in animation and out. We can also offset all of our animation in here. Let's keep going. We can adjust the top gap, which is that right there. If I pull on this, you can see we have more gap right there. Let me undo that. Let's go to the bottom gap. The same thing here. We can create more gap in here. Let's keep going. The same thing for the left. We can create more gap. And you get the idea for the right. We can also do the title gap, which is between these two. We can adjust it to 60. As you can see, it is working. So let me undo that. And the same thing for the shortcut gap as well. Let's take it up to 30. As you can see, we have a gap right there. We also have some shadow options. So right now we have this shadow right there. You can barely see it, but it is there. I can take the shadow opacity up to 100%. And as you can see, it's a lot more visible in here. I can also adjust the shadow distance. So I can go over here and maybe type like 25. Notice it has moved in here. I can also adjust the softness of it. So I can take it up to 100. And you can definitely see the changes. And the last one is our transition wipe. So here it is. It kind of helps us to transition from from one clip into another. So it's pretty quick, nothing crazy, but if you click on it, you have some options in here. You can adjust the color of it. So you can click over here and maybe change it to something bluish like that. Hit OK. And when you do that, it does change in here. You can preview this. It does work. Now you can also adjust the timing of it. You can offset the time between those two. And you can also adjust how long you want the animation to be. That's pretty much it. I really hope you see how powerful these essential graphics can be. As you can see, it changed my whole workflow. I get things done much quicker these days because of them. However, I will warn you, it does require some some expressions knowledge. You do need to know how to rig things up in After Effects so that you have all that control in Premiere. And if you struggle with the expressions, you should definitely consider taking my course on expressions called After Effects Expressions in Simple English. So if you are interested and you want to get more updates about the course, you should go to ukramedia.com slash expressions. We are planning on releasing it on April 16th, so definitely keep an eye out for that. But until next time, my name is Sergey Praknevsky and this is ukramedia.com.